I think the science that you're showing is really building upon some of the fundamental things that Darwin found, but in other ways, it's completely throwing a different dimension that he never comprehended when he was looking at this. And I wanted to use that as a backdrop to discussing DNA methylation because it is absolutely linked to your bioage. And if people aren't familiar with it, it's something that is happening constantly in our bodies and probably is the one of the biggest life forces that's actually driving us. But if someone really doesn't understand DNA methylation, can you explain it to them and maybe yeah. some of the markers behind it? Yeah, just ask me to clarify anything as I know you will. So it's actually more broadly, we'll just call it methylation. And DNA methylation is one type of methylation. So you're right, methylation is happening in all of our cells all of the time. There are hundreds of methylation enzymes, the enzymes that catalyze the reaction. There's a methylation cycle. This methylation cycle, for us to make the methyl groups, let me keep backing up here. A methyl group is a carbon and three hydrogens. If you can remember basic high school biochemistry, just a carbon and three hydrogens. And this simple foundational molecule can change the behavior of other compounds in the body. So in talking about DNA methylation, when there are a lot of methyl groups on a gene, it will inhibit that gene from being turned on. And conversely, when there's an absence or few methyl groups, it will allow that gene to be turned on. In the methylation cycle, that's where we make this carbon and three hydrogen. This methylation cycle is whirring in the body all of the time. We're just making methyl groups at a breakneck pace because there's hundreds of different reactions in the body happening all the time, all over the place. And that methylation cycle requires a bunch of incredibly important nutrients, which your listeners are familiar with, nutrients like folate and B12. Folate and B12 are, are good for you. They help us make these methyl donors, this carbon and three hydrogens. Choline in eggs or in soy products is another key player in the cycle. Betaine in beets is another key player. In the book, there's a a huge epinutrient appendix. It's actually 30 pages of all sorts of nutrients that are going to help with DNA methylation. And all the foods that have these methyl donors in them are listed. So yep, we do want people to eat liver if they're open to doing it. You don't have to, but if you're open to it, it's a superfood. It's a multivitamin in a food matrix. It has a daily supply of B12 and folate. I mean, it's just so ridiculously nutrient dense. It's got choline and just a host of minerals. So in the appendix, there's all of these foods and that's the methylation cycle. So the methyl groups are made and then they go and act in the body beyond DNA methylation. They detox us. Methyl groups are used to clear the body out of certain toxic comp- compounds that we're exposed to, including metals like arsenic, for example. It helps us make neurotransmitters. It helps us make feel good hormone. It helps our brain think. It helps our muscles fire. It helps clear out estrogens that can be damaging when they're too high of quantities. And then it also helps us when we make adrenaline. So it helps us make adrenaline or get up and go, but then it helps us metabolize adrenaline out. So methylation is happening everywhere. I think it's as fundamental as breathing. We think about the essentiality of oxygen, but having sufficient methyl groups around is as important for sustaining life. Over in the realm of DNA, there's an enzyme a family of enzymes called DNA methyltransferases that put these methyl groups onto genes. And we can support that and doing it right on the right gene, on the optimal set of genes. There's actually a family of enzymes called 1011 translocase enzymes that remove the methyl groups. And we want to support that as well. That's called demethylation. And I talk about that in the book and cover the nutrients that are helpful for demethylation. We just want to be working on getting it right with our habits and our dietary patterns. 